I'd like to talk to you today about my superhero comic book, Thatha Franklin. Thatha Franklin was, well, he's had a rough life. He was a boxer, state championship boxer, um, with a good shot at a world title. But when he went to fight for his world title, they found out that one of his eyes wasn't working. Uh, he'd been, he had had his eye knocked out as a kid, so he's been fighting professionally with one eye. So he was, I mean, he was ready for a world title, but they called him a handicap instead. So, um, so with that, he's kind of lived a bitter life. You know, he grew old and kind of, he's kind of senile, drinks, smokes, and he, he kind of runs the barrio that he grows up in. And, and he has a boxing gym down the street. Funny thing about him is every time he hears a bell, he kind of flashes back into his fighting days, kind of takes him back into the into the ring days. Um, his neighbor, Lou Walker, he, uh, he has a Chinese China Mart at the corner and he has a bell and every time Thought the Franklin walks into the front of the store it goes off and it sets him into his little temperament and he, and he doesn't get along with, with his neighbor because of it. But he's very misunderstood. He doesn't mean anything. He just, when he's at home and he sees his neighbor, he's friendly and Lou Walker's just like, whatever, you know, the way you were acting yesterday. But he just, he's, he's a, he does not, he doesn't, he's not aware that of his mental condition. Um, any, any kind of bell will kind of set him off. Um, his best friend is Bob Oso, and he is, not to let, the, let it out of the hat or anything, but he's the guy who actually took Dr. Franklin's eye out when he was a kid through a rock. And he came, felt bad, so he came back and he trained his fighters. And Basically, the, the cartoon is just about Dr. Franklin's uh, problems with his neighbors, being misunderstood. Yeah. And, but there's a lot of humor in it, a lot of realness. Seems so. Uh, you said he was a superhero? Well, he's, he's my superhero because he, uh, you know, he, he's not afraid of anyone. He's, he, he'll, you know, he'll scrap. He's, he's uh, fearless. It seems like a really unique character to choose to, uh, to focus around and a unique will. Are you... Do you think it like it will connect to like the demographics of like comic book audiences or you know or movie audiences? Or, you well, know, you know, I I like to think of it more of like a Sunday night TV show. You know, the humor involved in it, and you know the, the way people can kind of relate to the you know the reality involved. Um, but a comic book would be great. You know, I see it as a comic strip too. You know, I see it evolving. This might be an interesting thing to start first on the web, so you start getting an audience mm -hmm. going for it, because it's kind of a hard story to just instantly get into for the mainstream. Mm -hmm. But if you start building up a following, this seems like the type of comic that could work that way. The Grateful Dead's just in his first kind of sample yeah. panels. The, the comic book has a lot of, uh, you know, things that aren't as they seem, you know, kind of thing where I don't want the the whole basis to be oh it's the barrio and there's cholos and lowriders. I want it, I want I want to take people into the barrio to show them that it's there's nothing to be afraid of. There are people just like us. There you know you see a lowrider. There's not a cholo and it's an old lady with pink hair. You know and it's just uh, kind of spoofy. You know. Right on. Cool. Really Nothing is you. what it, it seems. Let's thank, thank you. you thank you for bringing. Uh, yeah, that is awesome. That's pretty very cool, right there, man. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you guys too. for your time. You thank you.